Hello friends, you are on the Gradient channel. Today we are going to talk about semi-automatic welding. Generally speaking, we can discuss semi-automatic welding for a very long time, but the aim of this video is to show the entire welding process, from choosing a semi-automatic welding machine to obtaining a high-quality weld seam. In this video, we will only talk about welding with shielding gas. By watching this video, you will learn the basics of semi-automatic welding and get the basic skills for your work. It should be noted at the outset that this video is intended for novice welders and professionals will likely not learn anything new. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's go! Let's start with the choice of a semi-automatic machine. The semi-automatic welding machine is selected depending on the task. The choice of a semi-automatic welding machine is influenced by the volume, types and frequency of welding work you plan to do. The main parameters will be range of welding current and wire feed speed. There are many different models of semi-automatic machines. There are models that solve basic tasks, professional models with synergistic control and industrial three-phase models for batch welding. Usually, people start their journey in welding by creating simple metal structures. The materials used are angles, shaped tubes and sheet metal with a thickness of 2 to 3 mm. For such work, a wire with a diameter of 0.8 mm is usually selected and welded at a current of 60 to 120 amperes. Therefore, we will show you where to start using the example of the Megatax Star MIG. The device operates in MIG mark, welding with shielding gas, MMA, welding with an electrode and lift TIG, welding with a non-consumable tungsten electrode modes. This device is intended for semi-automatic welding with wire from 0.6 to 1 mm at a current of 30 to 160 amperes. The wire feed speed is adjustable from 1 to 10 meters per minute. The machine can be equipped with a coil weighing 1 and 5 kilograms. To operate the machine, you will need the machine itself, a torch, a grounding terminal or mass, a gas hose, a cylinder with a reducer and welding wire. After choosing the semi-automatic device, let's move on to selecting the shielding gas and welding wire. Depending on the type of metal and its thickness, inert or active gases and their mixtures are used as shielding gases. The most common are CO2, argon and their mixture mix in various proportions. We recommend that novice welders use the following table to select the gas. Choosing a welding wire is not a difficult task. We choose the wire from the same metal as the workpiece or structure. The choice of wire diameter depends on the thickness of the metal being welded. For beginners, a table can also help. But after gaining some experience, you will be able to choose the right wire diameter for certain types of welding work. The machine settings will also depend on these parameters. We'll talk about them later. Before connecting the machine, let's talk about welder protection. First of all, we pay attention to the protective mask. We recommend using a chameleon mask because it protects the welder from infrared and ultraviolet radiation as well as metal splashes. In addition to the mask, we do not forget about special welding clothing, shoes and always wear boots. Next, prepare the workplace and our workpiece. Keep the workplace free of flammable materials and substances. Often, novice welders forget to prepare the workpiece. There are always various contaminants on the workpiece, rust, paint and others. These contaminants affect the quality of the weld. It is necessary to clean the weld zones to a width of 20 to 25 mm from the joint with a metal brush. If the workpiece is heavily contaminated, use octane or a solvent. It's time to plug in the device. Attach a gas hose to the gas reducer. Then connect the gas hose to the apparatus. Set the gas flow rate to the reducer. Gas consumption directly affects the quality of the weld. If there is not enough gas, pores may appear on the seam. If there is more than enough gas, swells occur and welding arc may deviate. This will also negatively affect the weld seam. 
Connect the torch to the plus Euro connector. Connect the mass to minus. We will weld in reverse polarity. Next, install the welding wire in the wire feeder. Be sure to remove the nozzle and the tip. Cut out the excess wire and leave 5-10 mm. The device is ready for use and you can proceed to the settings. MIG MAG welding mode. We will adjust the current and wire fit speed using the table. But you always need to make adjustments in the process. Therefore, before the main seam, we recommend making a test seam and checking whether the settings are correct. The touch modes will be discussed in details. Mode 2T is designed for welding shot seams. You must hold down the torch button at all times during the welding process. Mode 4T designed for welding long seams. Just press the key to start the process and when the welding is complete, press it again to end the process. The device also has the ability to adjust the inductance. This affects the arc stiffness and depth of penetration during welding. The inductance should be set individually. The inductance increases with the current value. The higher the inductance value, the wider the weld seam. Practice ignition of the welding arc. Leave the welding wire at the level of 5-10 mm. We recommend sharpening the tip of the wire with a side cutter before reach ignition. The pointed end of the wire makes it easier to ignite the arc. Arc ignition occurs after pressing the button and touching the workpiece with the wire. After pressing the button, the wire and shielding gas are fed. To extinguish the arc, release the button and lift the torch. It is important to keep the correct distance between the nozzle and the weld pool and also move the torch evenly. The angle of the torch is selected depending on the situation and we recommend holding the torch itself with two hands, one hand on the button, the other supporting the jib. At this stage, it is important to learn how to get a steady arc and move the burner evenly. We also recommend using non-stick agents to improve the quality of the seam and the durability of the burner consumables. Sprays, non-stick liquids and pastes are suitable for this purpose. Each product has its own application and effect. Once you have learned the skill of ignition and uniform arc movement, try making a sim. The primary goal is to mix the molten metal together. Just a little hint, the torch movement can be either forward or backward. When welding with a backward angle, the depth of penetration and weld height increase, while the width decreases. When welding at a forward angle, the depth of penetration is reduced, but the width of the sim increases. The edges of the metal are also better welded. Move the torch to the side of the weld seam at the end of the weld and remove it. This will prevent the weld from creating a so-called crater and will not damage the weld. No need to strike off or clean up the slag at the end. After all, this type of welding does not produce slag. With time, you will choose a welding style and semi-automatic settings that are convenient and comfortable for you. And when you are confident in making this sim, you can move on to other types of sims. Also, in the next video, we will tell you in detail about welding with flux cord wire. Friends, thank you for watching this video. We hope it was useful for you. Please subscribe to our channel and other social networks. We will be happy to communicate and hear your thoughts in the comments. See you soon!